Wow. Here we are again. Still got our cowboy tie on. So we're going to look about separation. Separation is something people can see that you are separated. For instance, just like you can see what color horse these people were riding. Not that these were evil or anything. But they were a different color horse. You could tell what color horse they were riding. So when you saw them coming, you knew who was on that horse. And uh, can people tell when you, they see you coming who you are? One of the greatest causes of the diminishing and the potential of li our life's message is the way we act. Uh, we fail to turn, failure to turn our bad, wicked thoughts away from us and say, hey, I'm not going to have those thoughts anymore or words, or even actions that we do. And uh, I had a real good friend that said a bad word all his life. He's a Christian man, nice Christian man. I hope and pray he's in heaven. But he said this bad word. And I said to him, hey, fellow, do you know that's not good for a Christian to be saying that word? Well, he kind of overlooked that. Either we separate ourselves from our sins and of our sins, or the sins will separate us from fellowship with God. And if we're separated from fellowship with God, we're separated from fellowship in the church and where we go or whatever. Your iniquities have separated. Look at Ezekiel 3 and 18 between you and your God. That means these guys were God's and they were, they were his. They belonged to God and their iniquity separated them. And their sin hid his face from them. God can't look on sin. He's looking down from heaven. And you've got this great big sin between you and him. You, you've uh, put a blinder between you and him. <laughs> For your hands are defiled with the blood, not wanting the wicked. Wow. You are defiled from not wanting the wicked, not telling them. Working beside a man for 30 years or 20 years or two days and not telling him about Jesus. Stand your ground. Say, hey, Father, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? Do you know that if you go to work and you're beside that man today and you come in the morning and somebody said, hey, you know that guy you was working beside yesterday? He said, yeah, he got killed last night. If he died and went to hell, you're responsible. You say, Peter, you're putting a lot of pressure on. Yes, I am. We are responsible to ask everybody, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? I can give you all of these you want. Come down to Faith Church. I can give you all these you want. You say, well, that advertises your church. No, it don't advertise our church. It says that you can go to this church on the web anytime you want and see it. And you can go to all kinds of churches. They're all on the web. This here is a school you can go to. And this here right here is the PH tidbits that you're watching on the YouTube right now. But we are responsible for every person we meet, especially like this morning I met the 84-year-old man. I was responsible for him. For your hands are defiled with the blood of not wanting the wicked. And your fingers with iniquity. That's moral impurity. <laughs> How good do you think your witness would be if you came up to a man and said, Hey, if you died right now... Would you go to heaven? He said, I might would, but I don't think you will. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, the sign, moral impurity. Your lips have spoken lies, broken promises and vows. Ecclesiastes 5, 4, your tongue had muttered, perverse, wrong attitude. Isaiah 59. Wow. Many don't realize how far reaching the scope of Satan's our realm and power really is. You don't think too much of it. Uh, God's realm and Satan's realm. God's realm is spirituality, spiritual activity. Where's the gray area? Qu questionable activities. Questionable activities that you do. Uh, that Somebody might say, I wonder if that guy is a Christian. Satan's realm is spiritual darkness and the activities of evil. For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. It's okay. Uh, we are not only separating ourselves from those things which cause other people to stumble, but also from the practice which causes our weaker brother to be offended. 
I've known people that I believe would have got saved had some other Christian not gone home at night and got him a six pack. And so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let no man put a stumbling block or an occasion in front of the other. Romans 14, 12 through 15, listen to this. If thy brother grieve, uh, grieved with thy knee, now walkest thou not charitably. Um, don't take that meat anymore. Don't eat it anymore if that grieves your brother. If, if this grieves your brother, don't do it anymore. If it causes a man to die and go to hell, don't do it anymore. You say, well, brother, but I love it. I know I loved it too. I loved it too. I was the man that could put two in my fingers and even three when nobody was around. <laughs> No smoke would have to come out. That's why when I did quit, I coughed up for about two months. Hunks off my lungs as big as dimes, as big as my fingernail, thumbnail. Little hunks of nicotine I had on there. Hurt. Ooh, it hurt. Every time one would turn loose, it hurt. But that's how I smoked. I was like that preacher that said when he got under conviction, he could have took a whole pack of cigarettes and ripped the bottom top out, put them in his mouth and lit the bottom and <laughs> sucked the whole pack. And that's the way I was. I, I was hung into them things. And God delivered me. And it took the Lord to deliver me too. And the call to service. Well, we'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.